Hey, yo, what's going on? What's goody good, gang? What's going on, Army, man? We back with another one. We back with another one. And, hold on, I'm smiling, but the fact is, it's because it's funny, because I really don't know what the flipping hell happened to the last video and why it went through so much confusion to get uploaded, but it was uploaded or it should be uploaded by the time I uh, I should be uploaded by the time I'm done with this video so um yeah definitely big time my apologies on that I really don't know what happened I told you all that I was gonna give you two videos in a day so I'm still gonna do that today that video is gonna upload and then I'm coming with this one right behind it you already know first and foremost thank you all as always for all of the support Love it. Could not get enough of it. Love you all, man. I um, I I don't even want to. I, I say it all the time. I, I know I know y'all know that I'm thankful, so I'm you know gonna move forward. So, other than that, as I said before, clothing line is coming soon. You see it. This is Roar and Duck, and uh, I guess I should. There you go. And on the back it says stars are not made. I mean, stars are not born, they are made. And yeah, that goes deep. You can take it however you want it, but stars are not born, they are made. And that is in reference to everything with my life. And if you think about it, that ties into everything with BTS. They were not born a star, they made themselves a star. As you said, like I told you, man, y'all don't realize how deep it goes, the reason why I connect with BTS. It even goes to my club. I'm telling you, like I said, but anyway, today we reacting to Another Boracity magazine video. BTS versus radio. That's that's what we doing today. I ain't gonna lie, I love these videos. Boracity magazine, Excellence, they they have good videos, and there's someone else I cannot remember um exactly, but definitely big shout outs to them. This one is gonna be Boracity Magazine. Um hopefully we'll get to a time where we can actually do some official collabing together, you know. I want to make that happen. That's what I want to do. I want to make that happen because, as y'all can see, I'm taking this serious. But, um, what else I'm going to add on? Oh, like I said, I, don't, I, I be forgetting about this. I got to make sure I announce this. Do not forget that I am offering memberships. If, if you go and join, I'm waiting for enough people to actually join, and I'm going to start releasing actual content just for the members only. I mean, it's going to be stuff like, I'm going to go into details like, um, my favorite BTS person. I may break down each person's life in my own personal video instead of actually doing reactions. I mean, it's a lot of different things I actually plan on doing, but I want to get a good amount of people. I um have one person. I uh, think the member name is Latosha. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing it, but definitely shout out to you, man. Um, like I said, you know, you got a couple of things rolling for me, and um, like I said, I'm definitely on the way to try to make that happen. And get a lot more things. I'm trying to get the clothing lined up. I'm trying to get the soft drop ready. I'm just, I do all this on my own. The editing, the videos, the recording, the sound, it's all me. I produce, I do, I'm doing everything. So that's why, you know, I do ask for you all support because the money will help me and I can possibly hire somebody to do some of this for me because it is a lot. I will be honest with you. And that is one of the reasons why it's hard for me to come out with multiple videos. I'm doing my best, and I'm going to keep doing my best. Like I said, I'm here. So if you can, you know, or if not, you don't want to join the membership, you ain't got to do that. You can go and give me a thanks. It's a thanks up under the uh, video. I think you got to click the three dots or something. It might be up under, just up under the video itself. Give me a thanks. You know, you can shoot me a tip. Let me know that you appreciate what I'm doing. And like I said, you know, just support me. And it'll help me support what I'm doing for you all to help me make this better, help me support my family. I mean, it's a lot. Like I said, you know, I'm not big on it. I'm doing this because I love it, but I like the support. You know, I would like, you know, I don't think anybody would mind making any money. I don't, I don't think so. But, <laughs> but other than that, um, I guess we're going to get into the video. I'm, I had to talk a little bit, you know. Sorry, man, I'm running my mouth. But anyways, let's get into the video, man. And we already know. Activate. 
Let go, let go. In 2017, BTS realized that they were not only the biggest artists in South Korea, but they also had a chance to be recognized in the Western music industry. That year, they were nominated to their first big American award, the Billboard Music Awards. They attended the ceremony and got their first Top Social Artist Award. So what was next? The biggest artists in the United States have at least one of these three things under their belts. Streams, sales, and radio play. These three things are the only criteria to get a number one single in music charts, including the Billboard charts, the biggest one in the music industry. I want to say something for this start. Like, I know everyone is into the streaming and everything like that, but I'm going to be honest with you. As we see, technology is a blessing, but it can also be a curse. It's been so much BS that happened with the music and just people trying to take off since, you know, technology has been like a mainframe of what's keeping everybody numbers together. It's like, it is, I don't know, comment below if y'all think technology has caused more damage or helped the industry more. I mean, I ain't gonna lie, that's, that's a tough one there. Comment below what y'all think though. This is why BTS went to many, many radio stations, had a lot of interviews, and gifted their latest album You Never Walk Alone to radio DJs. Armies got the message, radio is important. So we requested BTS' songs on every radio station we could, and if we saw that BTS was going to be interviewed on one, we sent them flowers, chocolates, and letters, thanking them for oh, giving this like... opportunity to BTS. What? Your army flowers? sent us flowers oh, really? oh. to thank us for having you on. And that has never happened before with any wow. other artist. However, as time passed, the radio spins never came, and the albums BTS gifted to radio stations were found unopened in garage sales. So why were radios massively tweeting about BTS and inviting them to their shows if they never intended to I'm gonna answer it before she even get there they used them they straight up just used them basically the, the, because they know when BTS is on it they know them radio waves is gonna be flooded the army bought these folks chocolate can, can we go storm up there and get that chocolate back I mean the flowers I mean, even them goddamn water bottles. If we, if we gave them the water bottles, we, we taking that back. I don't care if they drunk out of it. That's dirty. Like, <laughs> this, this is the second time that I, I found out. I mean, other than that, you remember the Army thing when they did the petition? They constantly keep using BTS, but they don't want to make them mainstream, but they keep using their image. That's crazy play their songs, even when they became the most requested artists on radio. Believe it or not, many radio DJs dislike BTS because they cannot profit from their success like they can from other musical acts. The only thing they can do is increase the radio's social media engagement. I want to see your techniques, okay, for taking a selfie. Can we put all these on our website and let people, course, like, course, maybe yeah, they can go. vote for who's got the best technique? And radio is able to directly profit from playing certain songs because of an illegal practice called payola. Ed, Ed, dirty man. That's sorry, YouTube ad man. Man, I was trying to get this headphone out of there. There we go. Payola, also known as the illegal version of pay for play, happens when an artist's record label pays radio to play their songs over and over again without disclosing the fact that the radio spins were paid. This way, these radio spins can count towards music charts like the Billboard Hot 100. It is basically bribing radio stations to play a song. This practice is illegal and it was banned from radio stations. However, in 2020, Rolling Stones magazine exposed more than 2,000 and 500 text messages involving Steve Sapp, a radio promoter with a number of radio stations. The messages reveal conversations between Sapp and multiple major label executives where they arranged multiple payola agreements. This led to an investigation. Y'all want to ask why it's so hard? Hold on, hold on. And y'all want to ask why it's so hard for BTS to try to take off? Look at, look at all them right there. That's Western music. That's Republic Records. That's, I can't quite see that one. Universal. And I think I seen Sony. It, it, and again, these are these gatekeeper corporations that make it hard for individuals like Big Hit to actually try to thrive out there because they're not going through one of them right here. That's crazy. 
targeting the Recording Industry Association of America, record labels, and streaming services, as well as a lawsuit that later revealed that SAP received more than 130 payments totaling over $300,000. And this is only one case of one independent radio promoter, which involved only three radio stations in the adult contemporary format, the Bay Area's KREV, Palm Springs' KRCK, and Las Vegas' KFRH. Agreements with major labels are believed to be multi-million dollar settlements, just like it was shown in a 2004 investigation. And I just want to clarify that the artists themselves allegedly did not have anything to do with these agreements. The text messages show no evidence that any artists were communicating with SAP, only their labels. So who does Payola? Panic at the Disco's radio promoter sent an urgent text Ayola, to Sap like when the group's esteem decreased, saying, I just did a 2000 deal with you. I need Panic back up. Sap texted a station employee, any way to move 5 seconds of summer to superpower till Saturday, I will get a great promo for you. Another text says, can we do Flora Cash and Khaled? Promise them 35 spins each. We'll cover that cash giveaway. When one station increased the number of plays of a single by LST, the Columbia Records trio by Labyrinth, Sia, and Diplo, Sap wrote, I just got you a 1000 promo through Columbia. Tell me what you need for stations. They will cover. Another text said, This week, kill Panic and Ed Sheeran and put Sean superpower for number one. Republic sweating me already. Another text So, uh, y'all don't realize the damage that that really causes. So, not only does it make it hard for people who's actually working hard to try to get these numbers up and everything like that to actually get you know plays and number ones but do you all not realize the discredit that you are doing to the artists themselves that is not actual hard work that they're doing that is fabricated work so you got the artists out if these artists know about it it's dirty but if they don't you got these artists out here feeling like they really on top, but you all are fabricating their whole way to existence, to number one. And that's crazy. Said. Can we pull down Jonas Brothers' soccer, helping Pink go number one? Apart from Panic at the Disco, Fights and Cups of Summer, Flora Cash, Khaled, Labyrinth, Sia, Diplo, Shawn Mendes, and Pink, other artists, according to the text, include Dua Lipa, the Jonas Brothers, the Backstreet Boys, Ellie Goulding, Dean Lewis, Marion Morris, Marshmallow, Halsey, Ed Sheeran, and other artists associated with Warner Music, Sony Music, Universal Music, Columbia Records, and Republic. Public records. The messages also reveal that the problem does not only rely on record labels willingly paying for radio plays, but also radio stations extorting record labels. Sap wrote on a text message, I'm going to make Patty beg for increase when talking about spins for a Louis Capaldi song. So how did he allegedly extort record labels? Okay, so I'm gonna just add in, I'm, I'm, my bad, I'm gonna keep going, you know. Except for Hosley, I, like I said, you know, she actually rocks with BTS, so I don't, I don't think it's no issue there. But everyone knows, if you really look at the list, those were all top-tier artists, considerably. I mean... YouTube, uh... For example, Green Day's lead singer Billy Joe Armstrong released a cover of I Think We're Alone Now, which gained organic popularity and started climbing radio charts in 2020, since it offered a small measure of comfort to a pandemic striking world. However, it seems like his record label was not interested in actively promoting the song. So Steve Sapp texted an employee at a radio station to reduce the song's spins as a way of forcing them to pay. He wrote, I hate to do this, but Billy Joe needs to go down. 
they, the record label, said they aren't working on it and not paying bills. If we take that, let's see if they are all of the sudden working on it. But this tactic, or I would say extortion, didn't work out. Sap then wrote, Billy Joe down and they never paid a dime. So when BTS were first invited to US radio stations in 2017, they were happily welcomed and had some pretty nice interviews. But I really don't think it's a coincidence that after some time, the same radio DJs that were interviewing them and being nice to them changed their attitudes towards them. If we can learn anything from this SAP lawsuit is that during these days, a Piola agreement had to be made, but BTS and Big Kid refused. I knew what was coming. The past video I did, um... If I recall right, it was the BTS hardship video. You remember we were looking at that chart and we were looking at the radio plays. Everybody was like 30 million, 20 million plus. And BTS was like right there, like 0.50, I believe. Like, now we see. Now we see. So radio stations turned their back on them, just like they did with Billy Joe Armstrong. <laughs> Now, you may think that radios refuse to play BTS songs because they are in Korean, and that is definitely part of the problem. However, even with their massive promoted English singles, they don't get the same crazy amount of plays as other smaller English songs, and when they do get radio play because of the massive success of the songs, radios only give them one or two spins during daytime, and some more spins between midnight and 6 a.m., so they can have the least amount of listeners they can. This is part of their extortion allegedly. Just compare Dynamite or Butter to the Shawn Mendes case shown in Sap's text messages. Sap wrote that Republic Records was paying for Shawn's single If I Can Have You to rise to number one. Sap wrote, this week kill Panic and Ed Sheeran and put Shawn's superpower for number one. Republic's sweating me already. Then the station told Sap that Shawn's single was set to play every half hour. But then Sap fired off another text saying, it is too close and we haven't jumped Ed yet. After 8 p.m can we do every 15 minutes no one will even notice no one listens to the radio unless in a car and apparently playing the Shawn Mendes song every 15 minutes worked because that week Mendes leapfrogged Sheeran on the media base chart and hit number one that, that shit is disturbing do you, do you see the way that they treating these like so oh man Yo, like, and this just adds to another reason. That's why I say I appreciate BTS's tenacity, man. And, you know, definitely stay strong, man, and not to give up. I definitely say, but me, I couldn't do it, man. That, That's crazy, man. Like, it's good. They got a very strong team because look at the forces that all of them are up against. That's crazy. Sap did say one right thing, no one listens to the radio unless in a car. And this is only when people don't have the chance to connect their streaming service to the car. Radio is dying, so why do music charts consider radio spins as important as sales and streams? The songs on radio are not the songs that the general public likes, they are the songs that the general public is forced to like. It is impossible for a song to be an organic radio hit when it's played every 15 minutes. The Billboard Hot 100 and the other music charts should stop treating radio numbers as a metric for a song's success. But of course, they won't stop. The music industry is an extremely corrupt system, and they don't care if BTS has more fans actually buying and streaming their music. If they don't pay for radio, their number ones will be taken away. They don't care that BTS is the artist that sells the most records in the world. The music industry has brainwashed music fans into thinking that the general public's approval is better than a loyal fan base, because that is organic success. When well, it's been proven time and time again that the general public's opinion is forced into them by music labels, shameful campaigns and strategies. And your favorite artist, no matter who it is, is or will be hurt by this. Because the general public only listens to what they're supposed to listen to. And then they move on and forget. Artists do care about views, likes, plays, and streams because it means that people are listening to their music and watching them perform. Those who say their favorite artists don't care about views or charts are just deluding themselves. Artists want what BTS has, whether they admit it or not. Uh, the, the BTS, they're massive. I want that social following. Me and Shawn Mendes are like, how do we get this type of fan base?
BTS and their label Big Hit always shared a message of honesty through music, and they refused to give up these values for a number one, even though this is something that every artist wants, including BTS themselves. What's kind of something else that you'd like to accomplish this year? Billboard Hot 10. Thank you, Toy! When BTS were rejected by radio in 2017, <laughs> ARMYs assumed that it was because their songs are in Korean and nothing else. And I don't personally know BTS, but maybe they thought this too. However, when they released Dynamite in 2020, something happened. BTS had a lot of interviews for radio stations again. They even had a bus where radio DJs could listen to Dynamite before the release date. They repeated this promotion for the release of Butter. BTS is sending tour buses around the country to different radio stations with butter on it, they're playing it, but we're getting a chance to hear it before anybody else. ARMY's hopes were up because these are songs in English, and this type of promotion worked to a certain extent. Compared to their Korean songs, BTS were gaining significant radio play for the first time. But even in the best case scenario, the radio spins were not nearly as massive as other artists who had songs way less popular than Dynamite or Butter. Maybe it's because they didn't do what they were expected to do, which is pay their way to number one. And even before the release of their English singles, BTS expressed that they hate these term manipulation tactics and that even though they had multiple wrongful opportunities to jump to number one, they refused to do so. Remain or again. It's a pretty common thing for BTS and other artists to invite radio DJs to their concerts and gift them their albums so they can get to know them as artists because radio DJs are supposed to be interested in music. Radio DJs were first supposed to share the songs they liked on their radio shows because they were supposed to be music lovers. They were even considered music experts, but they aren't. They do zero research before interviewing them. They ask them the same repetitive questions. And when armies talk about their music, they cut them to ask who their favorite member is. I like how they're really talented and they're very inspiring. Like all their songs, I love them. But, but Sabrina, let's just cut to the important. Who do you have the biggest crush on? They would rather tweet nonsense about BTS's looks, hair, or outfits to gain some likes. They even make fun of armies, implying we are obsessive by doing things like this. Me running to stay at BTS. Airbnb so I can smell Beast Pillow or the Let me get this right The mocking and it's crazy because if you go through history You mad because of people that are obsessed over these people, but do you not remember how people were over Justin Bieber? How people were over NSYNC how people were over Backstreet Boys how people were over Elvis. I mean, I can keep going down the list. And y'all want to mock them just because they're Korean. Wow. That is very much right. I, I don't know if I can say that these are the guidelines, but y'all know what that is. This other guy called Psych, who is the most immature radio host in history, he tweeted, We have BTS hair, people, and showed a video of BTS's like hair, according to him. Armis responded that it was weird for him to film that and that that was so embarrassing for him. He then said that it was just a joke and that he was making fun of crazy fan bases. When Armis didn't buy it and decided to stay away from him and not watch the interview, he said that we were not true fans because true fans would watch anything and everything when it comes to their favorite group. He also responded non-stop to every army he could and then said that everyone was just jealous of him. He tweeted, well I spoke the truth, I met them, some of you didn't. Is that not true? You don't think die-hard fans are jealous of people that meet BTS? Another tweet said, it must kill you to know that you'll never meet BTS and I've met them twice in less than a year. Also, be careful with talking about snapping necks. Violent threats are not typically acceptable on social media. Of course, making himself the victim. When the interview was released, the guys didn't seem very comfortable with him, even when the interview was before any of this happened. These fans, uh, you guys know, they're pretty insane. <laughs> The 
these radio DJs think this is what we want when the only thing we're asking for is for them to learn a little about their music. But they don't even listen to their songs. Mario Lopez interviewed them without even knowing that they dance. And I'm pretty sure he didn't listen to a single BTS song before this interview. What do you have planned for the concerts? Do you guys like to dance at your shows? Do you do a lot of dancing? Yeah, of course. So uh, yes, dancing yes. in the shows. What else could what else could we uh, look for? What kind of disrespectful shit? But hey, no, not Mario Lopez. Hey, I'm really, I'm really offended, bro. I, I, I used to watch Mario Lopez when he used to host the what? I went, yo, I cannot believe that, yo. Did he really just ask them, do y'all be dancing and stuff, bro? That's one of the main parts of their whole. Not Mario, man. That's cra that's disrespectful, bro. That wow, not Mario, bro. That that, that angle that hit me. Wow. Too. And despite being invited, radio DJs don't go to their concerts because they simply don't care. You guys ever been to a BTS show? And it didn't matter. Hold up, man. I mean, this dude in the middle. Now, I know you got some nerve. Bro, you like a whole Yeti. Sasquatch face. And tell me, have you ever been? Bro, the, I mean, yo, who is that? Benny Blanco. I swear that name sound familiar. Bro look like a whole Sasquatch, bro. How thick they got. At this point, the fact that none of them have come to their concerts, at least out of curiosity, shows their bitterness. They don't get any benefits from their success, so they don't want BTS to succeed. The radio DJ Big Ray, one of the only ones who openly supports BTS, revealed that radio DJs would talk bad about BTS on a private Facebook group. He tweeted, There's a Facebook group for radio people, and today they were basically shading BTS pretty hard. Mind you, I've been a pretty active supporter of BTS. BTS for a while, but I never thought I would get that upset over a Facebook post. These radio DJs who talk bad about BTS in private are the same ones who have the audacity to tell armies, well, maybe you should be nice to DJs, ignoring all the thank you gifts and nice messages we send them. These guys from Sirius XM even pretended they were the ones who bought these cupcakes for BTS, when it was armies who bought them for them to play their music. We have a little something to give to you guys in oh, celebration. We no. brought you cupcakes! Cupcakes. Oh, the cupcakes even have the logo of the fanbase who sent them, which is slightly different from the official army logo. And even worse, a DJ called Dave from That's another level of fucked up. I'm sorry, excuse this, this video has really been pissing me off. I I'm, I'm cussing more than usual, but yo they Hey, do, do you not really have <laughs> this disrespect? They tried to pass them their own cupcakes. From 103.3 AMP Radio from Boston said that armies were trying to poison him with the cupcakes they sent to the station as a thank you gift. He then said that it was just a joke because he always says that armies are annoying and then he manifested that BTS will break up because he believes in manifestation. So don't say armies should try being nicer to radio DJs. We've been nice enough. Radios need to stop pretending that what gets played on the radio is ever dictated by a fandom's relationship with a radio DJ. They don't care about the most requested song or artist. They care about money. In conclusion, I don't think we should blame BTS or Big Hit, a Korean company, for not bribing radio DJs. They are not the problem. Radio is. This person tweeted, Payola is illegal. Do you really want our guys or their company to do that? You do realize that they would take the money but then give another white or at least American artist more spins so they can't top the charts. The music industry is one of the most corrupt systems marred with systemic racism and xenophobia. There is no win in this other than what we're doing for years, showing them that we will succeed anyways. In 2017, BTS and armies were so excited and full of hope, without realizing how dirty the western music industry is. <laughs> We learned by experience, and it looks like now BTS lost respect for the industry they admire at some point. The name is really huge for us. We've been listening to Billboard like since we were like eight. They are literally the biggest artists in the world right now. I tell you, man, I, bro, that man, that man, RM, bro, I, I promise you, that man, accent. I don't know why. 
Hey, bro, I like his English accent, bro. That man talks so smooth, bro. I don't, I don't know what it is, but okay. They have experienced disappointment after disappointment. They didn't even promote their new singles in America like they used to. Left and right, bad decisions, jack in the box, and yet to come. Only have some calm interviews intended for only armies to watch. They have more personal content and projects. Basically the same as before but without the awkward interviews with people from the media. This is why BTS can only rely on armies, and that is a good thing. Other artists may be in the constant fear of being forgotten by the general public unless they pay of course so don't let others make you believe that BTS's number ones were inorganic because they are the only ones with an actual fan base actively purchasing their music and not paying for radio spins every 15 minutes Brian Rowley wrote a very good article for Forbes titled BTS didn't cheat their way to number one on the Hot 100 they just beat other artists at their own game so don't let others guilt you for buying BTS's music don't listen to what others say a stream a stream a stream watch their music videos and performances on official youtube channels buy their songs and albums it doesn't matter if they are old or new og7 group projects projects with only some members or solo projects bts will remain on top whether the music industry likes it or not Now, I'm not even gonna lie. Wow, that that's crazy. I I had no idea that it got that dirty, that dirty, in the music industry. I mean, wow, what the heck? They extorting people, making people pay money for radio plays, like. You know, um, that's why I'm, um, happy to be doing what I'm doing, man. Like, like I said in the last video, man, some of these videos, I do not, would not probably even see a dollar, especially like the music videos, because I mean, you know, I don't own music claims. I'm literally watching the content and reacting because I want to help them. That's an extra view for them. That's it when everybody else goes and views it. It's come on we got to keep the cycle going so that's why i say man i'm gonna continue to support them even though i know i probably want hopefully maybe one day i'll be able to end up linking up with you know one of the people who does the music npr music or something and we can actually do an actual collab but other than that i'm gonna continue to actually support them man no matter if it's paid for or not because if you just watch that video with me do you do you see how dirty Oh man, that's crazy. Yo, I might have, I don't know, man. I might, <laughs> but rest with you, I'll tell you, but they, they got some good videos, man. Um, Definitely shout out to uh, Veracity Magazine for this one. While I'm at it, let me make sure I go ahead and like it. I did not like it. I'm going to comment on it later, but uh, definitely, oh, I'm not even subscribed. I'm tripping. So definitely shout out to Veracity Magazine. Um. Yeah, that that's that was crazy. But um Yeah. The next video that just popped up is BTS versus Attendance Awards, yo. Wow. I think I might uh you know what to do next. If y'all like the content, like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And I'm going to keep on bringing content. As I said, I'm going to eventually do some more content. But as of right now, the rabbit hole, as I said before, is very deep. So I'm going to keep on digging. Like I said, I'm pulling up videos from years ago. I don't even care. Like, I'm trying to learn everything that I can because this is crazy. It's like making me learn stuff about my side of the music over here. Like what they said, the Western side of the music. Like, they dirty, man. So, yeah. Don't forget what I said in the beginning of the video, though. Comment below so you can get the specialized army shirt made by me. We'll get all the info and everything else once we get the comment. Comment below which one of the BTS members do I consider soul brother? Soul brother. 
I said it in one of my past videos, and if you've been with me, you know who I'm talking about. Which one of the BTS members of the seven do I consider the soul brother? That's how we're going to end it off. I hope everyone have a blessed day. Stay blessed. Never stress, man. Love you all.